and gentlemen, this is a gender forum. Uh, on behalf of the Heinrich Boll Foundation, the regional office for Eastern Horn of Africa, we wish to invite you um, here at the gender forum. My name is Joanne Birika. Forum this month uh, felt it necessary to look at the type of um, the many, many, many initiatives and many um, um, uh, programs or drives and campaigns uh, for peace and for security of the electorate and of candidates and of the general public uh, during the general election. Um, we, of course, uh, with the benefit of hindsight, realize how necessary and important it is for the country to have a credible, a democratic, a free and fair, and an inclusive um, election. Uh, where people are free and um, secure in their exercise of their political rights. So we have um, found different, many different initiatives of, of, of that nature, of you know, bringing about the democratic space that, uh, that um, the, the entire continent yearns for and possibly has gone many steps towards achieving. One such initiative being what um, they have dubbed the Women's Situation Room. I would like to tell you how this initiation started. It started in 2011, at the time Ellen Johnson, Sirleaf, and others were vying to become president of the Republic of Liberia. And during that time, we realized in August of 2011, and elections was in October, that we were going towards electoral violence. The newspapers were inflaming everyone's senses, People were ready to go ahead and burn houses and burn cars, and politicians were setting against each other. And the women of Liberia said, enough is enough. We've had violence in our lives. We've had civil conflict. We've had a civil war. We'll not go there again. And we called together a meeting of the women of Liberia. And at that meeting, we decided that we'll have a plan A and we'll have a plan B. But one thing we'll not tolerate was electoral violence. And we'll get the country mobilized to understand that it's not acceptable. And the women of Liberia came together. Uh, Shiba Boyce, who is here as a matter of fact, was the one that facilitated that meeting for, for us at the UNDP. And when we came together and made that decision, we then decided also who were the perpetrators of the violence. The perpetrators are usually the youth. So the women of Liberia then decided we'll go out and we'll embrace the youth and bring them into the coalition and make them part of this peace movement and let them understand it's their environment that they will be setting aflame. And so the youth joined us. There were 40 youth organizations, including all our national organizations. And they came together with us to form a partnership. And with this partnership, we went forward on peace advocacy. We only come into a country when we are invited, and we are invited by the women. So that's why we came into Kenya, because it was an invitation by the women of Kenya. And we brought to them the tools of the Women's Situation Room. The situation room has picked, or rather identified, the hotspot areas. And from those hotspot areas, uh, it was decided that we mobilize 500 observers. These 500 observers, majority, the mobilization was to be done by Maendeleo Anawake. Because of our leadership, it, in, uh, and looking at the, the time towards the elections, we were actually tasked with, uh, with that process of mobilizing the observers. 
the criteria for choosing the observers uh, was uh, pick the women leadership, 70% women. 30% we pick youth. So this is a process that involves women and the youth. And the team of eminent persons that you've heard both Deborah and Helen talk about have been going around the country and doing the groundwork for the Women's Situation Room. They've been meeting with all the stakeholders. They've met with the Elections Commission. They've met with all the political parties. They've met with the women in the various counties so that they can also start their, their work. And what happens is when they go into the various counties, the women are brought together and told that they also have to do the work in the counties and establish connection with the important, and st important persons and stakeholders in those counties. Because this is the groundwork that happens before elections. Because when election day happens, and the day after election or whenever they announce the results, we decide that we are not going towards peace, but we're going towards chaos. Those those uh, different connections must already be on the ground. We want you to know we've never replicated the women's situation room exactly in every country we've been into. The women's situation room is unique to every country because the women of Kenya, like the women of Sierra Leone, the women of Senegal, and the women of Liberia, will decide which of those tools that we have in the room are to be used in their country. And we'll be surprised also because they will develop new tools. There will be additional tools that will come on that we will then take on to the next country. So that is the strategy and that's how it works. In terms of our team of eminent persons, they have seen almost everybody that needs to be seen. As uh, CPN said, second level diplomacy. They have, they have met with political party chiefs. They have met, they have been given assurances, and they have gi been given pa names of persons in those offices and structure to work with. So we think we are prepared. We have got the hotline, and um, we have trained the observers. We have also a media strategy. I think starting tomorrow, we are going to massively really air out the situation room a strategy and uh, to create awareness. Right now, the Kenyan's team of eminent persons are actually in the region, meeting with elders, and they have had very good response, and um, mainly from using, of course, our outreaches of women, and then now bringing out uh, all the other people, the elders and the youth, and the response is very good. Women's situation room in Kenya is that we are actually working very closely, and that we'll be sharing information with Uchaguzi, uh, with Uyano, and because there are things that Uyano and Uchaguzi, for example, have that we may not have. Because Uyano, for example, has government uh, participation and intervention. The police is in there. The Ministry of Internal Security and others are involved. So we'll be sharing information so that if there's a problem, say, for example, somewhere in Kitale, in Transoya, and we have received from the observers information uh, uh, through the hotline, which, uh, which Nduko is going to share with us, then we process that information and test it is um, validity and veracity. And ve then very quickly, uh, not only call people in uh, Kitale, but also share the information with Uyano. And that way, then the police is involved, the means of internal security is involved, and many other actors from uh, uh, civil society uh, uh, and, 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 and the religious community. And that way, then action happens immediately in Kitale in terms of uh, like the Uchaguzi platform is that you can even uh, do crowdsourcing and actually get to see what exactly is happening on, on the ground at that very time. And through that kind of work, then you can be able to take action based on evidence, based on information that is real time. And that's why the Women's Situation Room for me is a massive relief. Uh, it is the most timely intervention. And because it has a gender perspective to everything that happens during elections. You realize that the model of the women's situation room is uh, tapping 
on the comparative advantages of multiple actors, uh, trying to examine what can this actor bring in, what can they do. It could be their huge large-scale network in the country. It could be their statutory role that they can actually do something when reports uh, come in. So I, 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 I know and I believe that many of us work with actors who may have known about the women's situation or maybe have heard about it uh, But I feel like uh, walking out of this door, there's uh, a job to be done by each one of, uh, each one of us. Write this number down somewhere. You will not forget it. Uh, zero, zero, eight, zero, zero, seven, two, zero, six, two, two.